Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind the Country Chic Cottage. Today we're going to talk about which heat press is right for you. I get this question all the time. Which heat press do I recommend? Which heat press should you buy? That type of thing. So I thought I would run through a quick video on how to choose the right heat press for your crafting. Now, we are gonna talk about heat presses today. So we're gonna talk about which heat press is for you. I'm not going to talk about the Easy Press. I have a full video on considering the Easy Press versus a heat press, and I will link to that below. So if you're looking for whether you should buy the Easy Press instead of a heat press, I would head there. I still love the Easy Press. I think it's great for the occasional crafter just wants to make some shirts every once in a while but I do realize that I have an audience that might need a larger heat press for like business type stuff and more advanced crafting. So we're gonna talk heat presses today, but I will link below to the easy press versus heat press video. So let's talk about types of heat presses first. The clamshell and a swing arm. The clamshell opens up, I don't have either one of these on, just FYI. Clamshell opens up like this, so it opens and hinges up and this is as far as this one opens now there are a variety of height options depending on the heat press you get and we'll talk about that in a minute the swing arm you open it up and the entire thing swings out of the way so you have your area to press here and you can work then swing the heated portion back and press down so that's kind of the two differences of heat presses so let's talk about each one of these. So with the swing arm press, you're obviously gonna need more space. So you need space for this to swing all the way out and all the way to the back if you desire. So it does need a larger footprint for you to operate. However, this does have really consistent pressure because it presses straight down, the pressure itself is very consistent with the swing arm press. So the clamshell, in contrast, because it hinges like this, you can get inconsistent pressure. And I have heard some people say that for sublimation, you don't want a clamshell press. I've used my clamshell press for sublimation without issue, but I have heard of some people having trouble, so just note that. Um, and then we talked about the opening here for you to reach in. So this portion's gonna be hot when you're working, and you're gonna need to reach in here to add your shirt or whatever into the inside. The distance between the plate and the heat heating element can vary depending on the press you purchase. Generally, the cheaper the press, the smaller that it opens. So just note that when you're looking for a press, how far it opens, whether you're worried about burning your hands by touching the hot plate as you're reaching in to add your shirt. Now some of the more expensive ones have a drawer option. This one does not, but a drawer option would mean that this entire plate would slide out like around here and then you could work slide it back in and press it so you can look for ones with a drawer option if you wanted that extra room to work where your hands were not close to the heating element some of the more expensive versions as well have an auto open feature so after the timer goes off on this model the press just stays down and it starts beeping and i have to lift it up and remove my item. But an auto open feature, when that timer goes off, it'll actually open up for you. And that way if you're doing something else, not paying attention to the press, you won't burn your item. So those are a few of the differences between clamshell and swing arm. There's also a huge wide range of sizes in both types of heat press. So the, what I'm gonna say about size is, you can ne never make the heating element larger. So if you are starting with a small press, like a nine by 12, and you find one day you really need a 15 by 15 press, I can't make this heat press any larger. I would have to purchase a different heat press in order to get a larger heated area. So when we talk about budget, and we talk about which heat press you should buy, you should probably look at the largest you can afford at the time. Now, a lot of these heat presses come in like five in one bundles, eight in one bundles, that type of thing. You'll see them all over Amazon. They're a huge bargain. 
Um, and what that means is they come with different attachments. So this one right here is a five in one press and it came with different attachments. So this is one for mugs, there's one for hats, there's one for plates, like five different attachments to this heat press. While that is nice, um, I find that a lot of the attachments are super cheap and I'm not really happy with the quality of those. So I would rather buy a more expensive press, a separate mug press if I wanted one, that type of thing, rather than spend my money on a five in one where I'm not happy with all of the attachments and I don't really use them. Um, and the next thing I would say, so we're gonna buy a heat press. We're considering clamshell versus swing arm. We've considered the size we want. Now, what do we do? So we could go cheaper, so this is a fairly cheap press. We could go the cheaper route. A um, few things I'll say about a cheaper press. They will last a limited time. Um, from my experience, a year or less, if you use it fairly regularly in your crafting. The other thing about cheap presses like these, and I find all the time, so I have a video on this heat press on how to use it, and I get comments all the time. There is zero customer support with a cheap press. There are basically zero instructions that come with the cheap press. There were zero instructions when it came with this one. I just figured it out and made a video on my own. Um, and the other thing about a cheap press is there can be really uneven heating across the heat plate. And so that can affect the quality of your projects. So as you're stepping up from the heat presses, how do you pick one that is going to be do a good job for you. So the first thing I would say is if you're going to go with the Amazon press, which tends to be a cheaper one, is to look at the reviews and look at a lot of the reviews. So what I find is a cheap press manufacturer, those are press on Amazon and they have a few friends make a review. It only has like five reviews. They're all five star and people start buying it and then are unhappy with the quality. So make sure there are a lot of reviews over an extended period of time and that those reviews are good before making your purchasing decision. The other thing I would say is to get the best press for your budget. So we're all gonna have a budget. There are presses that are $200, $300, $500, on up to $2,500. So determine what your budget is, like we talked about, which type you want, the size you want, and then what kind of heat press will fall within that budget. I am going to drop below a list in various price ranges of presses that I found that are a good deal. I would say that if you want a press that offers customer service and good instructions, I would look for a brand name. So this one's Caesar, that's a great brand name. I would recommend presses from Heat Transfer Warehouse. That's a really great reputable website that sells heat presses and they offer great customer service. So I would recommend them highly. And I will link to all that below. So I'm gonna link to some really inexpensive presses that I think would do a good job as, and then go up from there in price and ones that I think would be worth your money. But it's a completely a personal decision. If you wanna start out with a cheap press, see how your business goes and invest later, I don't blame you one bit. Start with a cheaper press and then just invest as you go. Not a problem at all and I think you will if you start with a cheap press, you'll eventually see what type of press you do need and what type of press you will like. So if you start with this cheap press and it's a swing arm and you hate it for whatever reason, for all the room. Um, so one reason for me that a swing arm, I don't really like it is because this is hot and then I swing it way over here. Um, so I would want like a table that covered this whole area so no one would walk by and touch the hot plate as it's you know, swung out onto the side. So I will say that. Um, and I would look for one with a digital display at a minimum. So there are super cheap presses and they have like analog displays and I find those are not user friendly at all. So I definitely look for a digital display at a minimum. Both of these have a digital display. Um, so this one I think is like two, 250, and this is like 350. So these, neither one of these are expensive presses, um, but there is, you can really tell a difference in the quality once you go with a name brand like the Caesar Press. Um, I can tell a big difference in the quality of this one versus the quality of this cheaper, just Amazon off brand, brand name press. So if you're ready to buy a heat press, consider everything I talked about, consider the differences between the models, then drop down to the description below. You might have to click read more and start looking at the press lists. So I'll list them by 
price basically. So less than $300, less than $500, and less than $1,000. Click on each of those, see which one fits your budget and your needs and which one you like. So maybe you can see right away that you really want the swing arm. I'll have a swing arm below that would fit in your budget. And then check those out. Hopefully you'll find one that you love from those lists. I will say that I haven't tried all the ones on the list. My craft room would be full of heat presses if I did that. But I will look through a bunch of heat presses for the reviews and that type of thing. You will see quite a few from like Heat Transfer Warehouse. I really recommend if you can to go with a reputable place to buy your heat press. It'd be much easier on returns. Um, so this Amazon press, I get comments all the time on the video where people have trouble with it and then they can't return it because it just comes from China, from someone that has zero customer service, no place to call, that type of thing, and they get it and it doesn't work. Um, so I would caution you on purchasing like a really cheap press from Amazon just because the reviews are so horrible and it's so hard to get that customer service back from a press like that. So I hope that helped you pick a heat press that's right for your business. If it did, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about heat presses, drop below, drop me a comment. I might have a video already and I'll drop a video link. It might inspire me to create a future video all about your question and answering more about questions on heat presses that I get all the time. So thank y'all so much for joining me today. If you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos like this all the time and you don't wanna miss any of those. So thank y'all and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.